We have three plans. Most people, when they think of a strategic plan, they think of one, mm -hmm. one plan. As of right now, we have three. One that focuses on learners, one that focuses on professionals, and one on support systems. I have my researchers that are tied to each of those, each of the goals, and we try to divide that up by those plans so that the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, we're able to give um, the attention that each one of those goals deserves. So on a day-to-day -day basis, different teams will meet. We really encourage each of our strategy teams to meet at least every other week to talk about the work that's going on. Um, and one of my researchers will be there to help them make, and make sure that they are talking about the metrics, that it's not just about checking off a task, that those tasks lead to impacting students. So my team will go out, uh, be in those conversations, and then as a team, we come back together. And, and my team's very small. I have two researchers. I have one person that uh, helps me with writing the plans, uh, editing the plans, making sure that everything that we have online, either on our website or on our internal um, intranet site, that all of that is kept up to date. Uh, but we will come together as a team and discuss what things need more attention and that could be that we need to provide a workshop for all strategy leads. There have been times where we've seen that there's a disconnect between what's being talked about in meetings and how that needs to play out across education in Kentucky. So we need to go back and focus on what we call delivery chains. What is the role of the department versus the role regionally in the district, in a school, and in the classroom? We're also very aware that our control stops at the district level. Um, after that, we can impact what happens at the school level and at the classroom level, but that's not something we control. However, we do put trajectories in place, which are five-year goals. So we know where we want to be at the end of five years. Where do we need to be at the end of each year? And by understanding the work, how it's being rolled out through those plans, we're able to uh, predict where, or project, I should say, where we'll be at the end of each of those years. So the conversations in the everyday meetings really do need to focus on that kind of data. So we are looking for sources of information and data that will tell us if we're on the right track. As you think about the initial implementation of the delivery unit uh, approach and, and where you're at now, were there significant changes made along the way in terms of modifying things to, to kind of fine tune the approach? For the team mm -hmm. itself or the work? Uh, the work. Okay. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think you know, one of the first things that we had to do was establish our routines. This was a very different way of working for the department. Uh, you know, we already talked about the fact that we were very siloed before, and that is a really difficult culture to break. Uh, but we've been, I think we've been very successful with it. We see people talking across the different offices in a way that they never have before. Um, part of those, those routines or processes that we ha now have in place include starting with those meetings and then on a quarterly basis all of the strategy leads report to me. So we, they prepare a common presentation, making sure that they do focus not only on what work is being done, but what is the impact of that work. And they need to share that out on a quarterly basis. Uh, from there, we, my team compiles that information and we share it with the commissioner in a stock take. Uh, the stock take is led by the goal lead, so Dale would be leading next generation uh, learners around CCR and graduation and have that conversation with Dr. Holliday or the next commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Dr. Holliday is generally gives guidance. You know, when he sees where the numbers are falling, he gives really good guidance as to what kinds of tweaks we need to be making. Or if we find that a strategy just isn't working, it may be time to go ahead and strategically abandon one thing for for something else. Ultimately, the in, the what we receive back from him through those stock takes is then written up in a quarterly report and that gets shared with our Board of Education. It's also posted on our website, so it's, it's all very public information. Let's talk about uh, a specific case. Um, 
uh, Dr. Winkler, you're here uh, with us today, mm -hmm. and I know that you and Karen have worked at length, um, and very much involved in the, the del delivery system. Um, let's talk about um, what the biggest challenge or the issue was that kind of started uh, your working relationship. Well, I work and is a goal lead and, and focus on two main goals, college and career readiness and also <coughs> graduation rate and, or persistence to graduation. <coughs> college and career readiness, though for us in Kentucky, uh, was really a legislative uh, mandate with Senate Bill 1 in 2009 that said, Oh, we must improve our college going rate as well as reduce the number of students taking remediation that first year of college. So that helped the Board of Education and also our other sister agencies such as the Council on Post-Secondary Education to set goals. Uh, and so in 2010, the graduating class, only 34% were college and career ready. So we had to come together to develop a definition first and foremost of college and career readiness and then to set measures for that. And so um, that is how we really that started guiding our work and delivery at the very beginning were those mandates and, and these helped us then to form our, our, our goals uh, for our Board of Education. And so we have then had to work across the agency with all offices to say, okay, how does my work impact other uh, offices and also all around a common goal. And so we brought in everyone that has any kind of impact on college and career readiness. And so we've developed different strategies to push on that particular uh, measure. Um, and some of the things, and, and those have, um, evolved over the last four to five years because uh, we got into some strategies and realized that's not really a strategy. Sometimes we, we, were, th we were looking at a product or um, a procedure that was not really a strategy. So uh, we've had to step back and make some changes over time, but I think for mm -hmm. the betterment of students across Kentucky. Um, underneath the college and career readiness uh, goal, we look at career pathways. We also look at persistence to graduation. We're also looking at interventions, and we look at learning systems. And so we have individuals who are leading th those strategies around that. And, um, and one of the big things is it really has an impact on our accountability system because our Board of Education and this information that she presents to them regularly, they take that and then they make tweaks to our accountability system um, to help students and schools across the state uh, improve on the goal. When you think about um, kind of the, the results of this, of this collaboration, um, what, what were some of the best uh, things that came out of this? Well, for us, uh, we're very proud of our college and career readiness rate. As I said, in 2010, the graduating class was at 34% were ready for college or careers. Uh, the class of 2014, it was at 64.2 percent, wow. and so, uh, and we feel that we will, the class of 2015, we're in the point of cleaning up some data for that class, but we look to gain at least another two uh, percentage points, two to three, in that area. So we're very excited about mm -hmm. that, uh, and we think it's very closely related to graduation as well. We have a graduation rate close to 88 percent, um, puts us in the top 10 in the nation with graduation rates. And so uh, we've been very pleased with those results. How do you assess college and career readiness? <clears throat> in Kentucky, uh, we are an ACT state, so all juniors are required to take the ACT. And so we have uh, benchmarks that have been agreed upon by uh, the Kentucky Department of Education and the Council on Post-Secondary Education and all post-secondary institutions in our state. And so a student who meets those benchmarks is deemed college ready. Uh, but we also have uh, other assessments that can take place uh, or replace uh, a, a benchmark such as the uh, Compass or we have a Kentucky online assessment we call Coyote. Uh, but that's how we measure college readiness. A student who does not meet those benchmarks are required though to have interventions that uh, senior year to uh, get them to the point where they will not have to take remedial work in college. Our career readiness is measured by students who complete a four-course sequence in a technical program or in an arts pathway. And those students then e either take the ASVAB and, or work keys to measure their uh, academic attainment 
and then we have uh, industry certifications or we have our Kentucky Occupational Skill Standards assessments that measure the technical skill attainment. So a student who uh, achieves both the academic technical and the um, or the academic component and the technical component mm -hmm. together uh, and completes a program will be deemed career ready. One of the great things that our Kentucky Board of Education did uh, in 2011 is that they said we're going to put value in a student who can do both. So a student who takes a rigorous college preparatory curriculum uh, achieves the benchmarks on the ACT in addition to completing a technical pathway and an earning an industry certification or Kentucky Occupational Skills Standards is deemed both college and career ready and they count as a half point bonus, a 1.5 in our accountability system overall. Okay.